Imagine a world of molten landscapes, crushing atmospheric pressure, and clouds of sulfuric acid. It sounds like a vision of hell. But in the 1970s, Soviet scientists dared to dream that life might exist in this unforgiving place, the planet Venus. At a time when space exploration was still in its infancy, the Soviet Union embarked on an audacious quest to land on our mysterious neighbor. But with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead and air pressure equivalent to being 3,000 feet underwater, touching down on Venus seemed all but impossible. So how did the Soviets manage to pull off this incredible feat not once, but multiple times? What cutting-edge technology allowed them to survive on the planet's surface, even for a brief moment? And most importantly, did they find any hints to suggest that we might not be alone? Join us as we uncover the untold story of the Venus Venera missions, the Soviet Union's daring gambit to hunt for alien life in the most unlikely of places. In the midst of the Cold War space race, while the United States had its sights set on the moon, the Soviet Union turned its gaze to a different celestial target, Venus. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, the Soviets launched a series of increasingly ambitious missions, known as the Venera Program with the ultimate goal of landing on Venus's surface and perhaps, just perhaps, finding signs of extraterrestrial life. But the challenges they faced were enormous. Venus, it turns out, is a planet of extremes. Its surface broils at a staggering 900 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. This extreme heat posed a significant challenge for spacecraft design and material durability. With the odds stacked against them, the path to success was not easy. The Soviets had to overcome numerous challenges and setbacks over the course of eight missions before finally achieving their goal. The first few Venera missions, launched in the early 1960s, failed to even reach Venus. Venera 1, launched in 1961, lost contact with Earth en route to the planet, and Venera 2, launched in 1965, suffered a similar fate. These early failures were a testament to the immense difficulties of interplanetary travel at the time. Undeterred, the Soviets pressed on. Venera 3, launched in 1966, became the first spacecraft to reach the surface of another planet. But it crash-landed, and was unable to send any data back. Venera 4, launched in 1967, successfully deployed its parachute and began to transmit data back to Earth but it was crushed by the planet's immense atmospheric pressure before it could reach the surface. Still, it provided valuable data about the composition of Venus's atmosphere, including confirmation that it was primarily made up of carbon dioxide. The Venera 5 and 6 missions, both launched in 1969, were designed to further study the planet's atmosphere. Both spacecraft successfully entered the Venusian atmosphere and transmitted data back to Earth. But like their predecessors, they were ultimately crushed by the extreme pressure. However, their data provided important insights into the planet's atmospheric structure and helped pave the way for future missions. It wasn't until Venera 7, launched in 1970, that the Soviets finally achieved their first soft landing on the surface of Venus. The spacecraft survived for a mere 23 minutes before succumbing to the extreme heat and pressure but it marked a major milestone in the history of space exploration. It was the first time a spacecraft had successfully landed on another planet and transmitted data back to Earth. The Venera 8 mission, launched in 1972, aimed to build on the success of its predecessor. It carried a more advanced suite of scientific instruments and was designed to operate for a longer period on the planet's surface. It lasted twice as long and was the first with the ability to detect luminosity on Venus, which turned out to be akin to a gloomy day on Earth, hinting at the thickness of the cloud cover. It also measured soil density and found it to be similar to loose sand or clay. These findings provided valuable new insights into the nature of the Venusian surface. The Venera 9 and 10 missions, both launched in 1975, were even more ambitious. They were the first spacecraft to include cameras designed to capture images of the planet's surface. The images sent back were a revelation, revealing a desolate landscape punctuated by angular rocks and boulders. These were the first images ever taken from the surface of another planet, and they provided an unprecedented glimpse into the alien world of Venus. 
The final two missions in the Venera program, Venera 13 and 14, were launched in 1981 and 1982 respectively. And most famously, were the first missions to have carried microphones and successfully record and transmit audio from the surface of another planet. A truly remarkable achievement that further pushed the boundaries of planetary exploration. They lasted for a rather impressive 127 and 57 minutes respectively. These spacecraft carried the most advanced scientific payloads yet, including instruments designed to analyze the chemical composition of the planet's soil. Using robotic arms, they successfully scooped up samples of the soil and analyzed them for signs of organic compounds. The results were tantalizing, but inconclusive. Could there be life on this hellish world? The data from these missions only deepen the mystery. We may never know for sure, but what we do know is that the Soviet Venera missions accomplished what was once thought impossible. They didn't just land on Venus, they survived, they explored, and they sent back our first tantalizing glimpses of this alien world. Throughout the Venera missions, Soviet engineers had to develop new technologies to overcome the extreme conditions on Venus. They created heat shields from specialized materials that could withstand the high temperatures experienced during atmospheric entry. They had to design pressure vessels capable of enduring the immense atmospheric pressure on the planet's surface. Since the dense atmosphere on Venus would disrupt communications with Earth during the lander's descent, they also had to make the spacecraft capable of operating autonomously. They had to devise innovative solutions for the many problems that Venus posed such as the inclusion of a refrigeration system designed to keep the lander's electronic components cool for as long as possible in Venus's harsh environment. This cooling system utilized a special fluid that would evaporate at high temperatures, absorbing the heat and maintaining a lower temperature for the sensitive electronics. The goal was to extend the lander's operational time on the surface for as long as possible, allowing it to gather and transmit as much valuable data as possible. The refrigeration system, combined with backup components and safety measures, showcased the Soviet engineers' determination in maximizing the chances of mission success in the face of these challenging conditions. However, it's hard not to wonder about the secrets they may have uncovered. The recent release of previously classified photographs from the Venera missions has only fueled speculation about what the Soviets truly discovered on Venus. While the official reports and published findings provide a fascinating glimpse into this alien planet, there are those who believe that there's more to the story than meets the eye. Some theories argue that the Soviets may have found evidence of life on Venus, but chose to keep it hidden from the world. They point to odd shapes in the Venera images and the strange, spongy nature of the planet's soil as hints of something more than mere geology. The fact remains that the Soviets were operating in a time of great secrecy and political tension. The Cold War was at a tight, and the race to explore space was as much about national pride and one-upsmanship as it was about scientific discovery. So could there be more to the Venera missions than we've been told? Could there be photographs, readings, or even samples that were never made public? The answer, as unsatisfying as it may be, is that we simply don't know. The fall of the Soviet Union and the passing of time have only made it harder to unravel the truth.